Hello and welcome to Reykjavik Greipans newscast. My name is Valur Grattison and I'm, 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 blah, I am an editor in chief at Reykjavik Greipans. Happy New Year and all of that. Uh, sorry that we were not with you last week. Uh, we were printing, of course, and we have now our music awards out. Uh, you can check it out. Uh, we have uh, the, the band of the year is space, uh, Inspector Space Time. I always uh, <laughs> mix this. It's a fantastic uh, dance band. You should check it out, definitely. Also, Sole, uh, many of you perhaps know who she is. She is more famous, uh, our, like, not in Iceland, but she's more famous around the world than in Iceland, actually. But she's, she's a fantastic artist. As well as Kef Lavik, which is like a, a play with words when it comes to the name of, well, the old name, actually, of the, the town where the, the, uh, where, the air, air, like, where the airport is. Anyways. Check it out, uh, it's very interesting, very fun. Uh, before we start, actually, I want just to remember you, uh, remind you on the membership. Uh, we have had a, a very pleasant spike in membership, and we love that because we are trying to do many things at the same time, and, and we see this as a very nice support, so thank you for being with us there. Uh, also, if you want, you can join our High Five Club, uh, either at the Secret Handshake or Elbow Five level, uh, these are like the top tiers, uh, and I'm saying, telling you this basically because we're having an AMA or Ask Me Anything next Friday, so you can ask me and Andy Sophia Fontaine, our news editor, about whatever you want to ask us about when it comes to Iceland, us, uh, whatever, Polly even. <laughs> we, we don't get uh, often a good question about Polly, so keep that in mind. Uh, yeah, uh, I think that's it. Uh, we, today is actually, we were going to uh, go to the beats. Well, not, not even that. Uh, at 11 o'clock this morning, I found out that uh, the school was, uh, it was closed at 11 in the morning because there's a vaccination, and I have to go into that, there's a vaccination for children under 12 years old. So I'm, I'm with Italy, you want to come with to me? Here is Italy, my beautiful star. But no Polly, because the weather is horrible. We were going to do this outside, but it's so rainy outside, and therefore Polly have to wait outside. Uh, in the car, actually, but we went to the Italy's favorite museum, uh, the Whale Museum, and you can see a lot of like beautiful like uh, skeletons uh, and like real like life-size models of whales. And it's, it's trust me, this is, uh, in my opinion, the the hand, hands down best museum when it comes to children. And we have often choose, chosen that for the best of guide in our Radio Grapevines uh, magazine. So if you want to come to Iceland, you have children. This is the place to go to. But I'm going to do news now. Uh, Italy is going to tell me a little bit about the whales. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. Let's go for it. First, first things first, uh, we have to finish the, the stories about the volcano. Uh, the volcano, of course, the, the, the earth in Reykjanes Peninsula was shaking like relentlessly and has been doing like, of course, for weeks and days. Uh, but the thing is uh, that uh, it, it suddenly stopped the other day. Uh, the <laughs> Art is being artistic, so it goes. Wow, this is wonderful. So the volcano was shaking like the, the earth, and everybody said this is the same rhythm as before, and uh, geologists were saying this is probably going to go off again. Uh, it's very likely it will go off again in the Reykjanes Peninsula, uh, at the same place that it used to be, but uh, our worries, like we spoke about uh, last time, was that if it would be in uh, Nátt Haga Kriki, this could have been a, a real problem. But the thing is, uh, it suddenly stopped like Earth does. I mean, there is eruption, and then suddenly it just stops. Uh, and this means that right now, it hasn't uh, been an earthquake for quite the time. Uh, and geologists say that it's uh, almost impossible that uh, there will be any uh, eruption from now on. Uh, that said, uh, there is, uh, we know that this is just a, a question of time and, and place. The thing is that uh, we know that it will definitely go off again somewhere in the area in the next years or decades. Uh, but it's obviously not going to happen uh, today, tomorrow or next month. So this is where we are when it comes to that. Uh, now, 
COVID. So we really want to go into the COVID. Italy, do you want to tell us about these whales? Do you know anything about this one? This is, my, this is my favorite whale, actually. Yeah. Do you know what it's called in English? Yeah. It's a silly name. It's called sperm whale. Uh, oh, but, yeah, I know that name. But in Icelandic, it's called burkvalur. And I love this whale because uh, they have the most terrifying battles in the, in, the, in the Atlantic Ocean where they're fighting huge octopuses. Yeah. And what they do, actually, they, they uh, hunt them and they drag them down to the deep, uh, basically to drown them. And these are incredible battles. And probably, if you could see it in the in the like uh, in the, in the ocean, it would be spectacular to see this. So COVID, it's pretty brutal these days. Uh, way too brutal, in my opinion. Uh, we have 10,000 people in quarantine, and another 10,000 people are now in isolation with COVID. We have 39 people in the hospital. That is so much, but it's, it's, it's much in Icelandic standard. Well, only four, well, only. We have four people in uh, uh, ventilators, right? Uh, and, uh, but f seven people are in, the, are in, the, in critical care. Uh, of these uh, seven people, we have five people which are uh, not vaccinated and two which are vaccinated. Uh, actually, back, unvaccinated people are now becoming a problem a little bit when it comes to uh, uh, like the status at the hospital, because it's so important that the hospital don't feel, remember this from the beginning of the pandemic, everybody was trying to protect the hospital, but now uh, it seems like uh, they are ha like a heavier burden uh, when it comes to the healthcare system in Iceland, which is of course, uh, I mean, it's bad, but it is what it is. Uh, we are not, uh, we are not uh, telling people like, uh, ordering people to get the vaccination. It's still like uh, it's a free choice. Uh, and it's, it's all about just being uh, responsible about what to do. Uh, some people can't, just can't have it. Uh, and uh, that is because they are either perhaps pregnant women uh, or, uh, well, that have changed though. But some pregnant women want to wait, of course. Uh, but we also have uh, people that are just uh, with underlying sickness and it, it could be uh, bad for them to have the uh, the shot. Uh, so, uh, the dark news actually is that four people have died in this new year, only in this, what, 11 days, it's 11th of January today, and, uh, and four people have died from COVID, which means that uh, this is becoming a, a pretty bad uh, uh, wave. This is, we call this the fourth wave in Iceland. Uh, and this is a serious stuff. And the thing is that the government is now, uh, they are going over uh, uh, the epidemiologists' uh, like propositions. Uh, he has some ideas what to do, uh, and they go over it and they will announce it today. There have been some pretty drastic like uh, changes when it comes to uh, when it comes to this. For example, if you have three shots, like the two shots and the boost, uh, you don't have the quarantine like everyone else. You can actually be in quarantine, but you can roam around pretty freely as long as you have a mask uh, and, you, and you're not around people that have, uh, for example, the elderly or people with underlying uh, diseases. You can also, uh, if you have uh, two shots and you recently had the virus, and this is an important distinction, uh, then you can actually uh, also be, the, the same rules apply to you. Uh, but if you only had two shots, uh, then uh, you, you have to be careful. Uh, you have to be in quarantine and so on. Uh, I'm not sure. This is something we're trying out. Uh, we're hoping that this will be a good thing, not a bad thing. We don't really know yet. But uh, our epidemiologist, he seems to uh, be pretty optimistic about this. Uh, and also, uh, important note, if you want to travel, for example, around Iceland, uh, and this is very important because uh, we have these quarantine hotels, and the quarantine hotels, they are free, for example, and many know this, uh, especially tourists that come to Iceland, but they are full right now because we have so many people coming to Iceland uh, and so many that are uh, with the virus, uh, not only uh, foreigners, of course, but also Icelanders. Uh, but the thing is, of course, uh, where do you want to go? But there's a very nice museum here. I'm just going to lead him. But the thing is that uh, if you come to Iceland and you get the virus, it's not, uh, not guaranteed that you can get into these quarantine hotels straight away, not, in, not immediately at least. And this means, well, 
This means that uh, you might have to pay for an extra night or two or three in the ho in your hotel if you get the virus. So this is this is uh, an important note to keep keep in mind. Also, if you are actually traveling to Iceland right now, uh, you you have to do a little bit of research before, like how to get food, how where to order, and so on. There are pretty nice places that you can uh, go to. Uh, we we perhaps we need to make an article about this. <laughs> uh, but it would be very helpful, I guess. And then to the reason why we, I have Itli here with me. Itli, of course, should be in school, but he is not. Uh, and the reason is that he is, uh, today they are vaccinating, well, the whole, this whole week, they are vaccinated, vaccinating all children under, uh, under 12 years old, like five to 12. So the thing is, so the thing is that uh, me and Itli, we are going to get the shot at, uh, at uh, five o'clock today. Where is Ili, by the way? There he is, Ili. Hi. So we're going today, me and Ili, and we're going to have the shot. How do you feel about it? About the vaccination? Uh, COVID. Yeah. Uh, it's horrible. It's horrible. Yes. Uh, we've been trying to talk about it. Well, we have been talking about it. Uh, and he seems pretty uh, optimistic about it. Uh, only my older one is, of course, vaccinated, and so is the whole family. It's the best way to go about it, uh, in our opinion. Uh, there might be other people that have un other opinions about this, but uh, this is the, the situation. Of course, uh, this has been like uh, upsetting a lot of like anti-vaxxers in the society, and there's been a pretty harsh debate about uh, if if to vaccinate the children and not. And but all scientists say it's more than, like more than uh, fine. Uh, and uh, like m most Icelanders do not, are not uh, concerned about this. Uh, especially, basically, the only thing we're concerned about is that they will be sick perhaps the day after, the, the day thereafter, uh, and we have to be at home with them, and therefore uh, we, we will not be able to be at work. That's <laughs> basically how Icelanders think. Wow, look at this. Is this, uh, what whale is this in the end? This is Blue Vein, of course. He is huge. He's a big have you have you seen the whale in the like uh, in the ocean, like when they're we were like yeah never <laughs> never. I've seen them like not like this, but I've seen like their tail going splashing into the water. I've never seen a but whale. I it's it's actually quite shocking to see how big this creature is. It's like. A, it's like an airplane, <laughs> more than that. Do you know how old they can get? No. <laughs> they can probably get quite old, right? Like 200. 200? I don't know, but I'm guessing. There are sharks, actually, that can get uh, up to 400 years. Imagine that, shark swimming around. They've been here for 400 years. That is weird, right? What can a megalodon Megalodon, yeah. Maglodon, that, that's the newest thing. Kids don't talk about anything else than Maglodon for some reason. I don't know. So, a uh, few words though in the end about uh, the continuing, continuity about the, when it comes to the Me Too like revolution. We have uh, a new Me Too revolution in Iceland, and this has been uh, a lot of like, uh, this has been occupying, uh, occupying all of our debate in Iceland. Uh, and for a good, good reason. Uh, there has been shocking interviews, and the last, last interview that we saw was actually with a, uh, with a young woman. Uh, she's, uh, I think she's a second generation uh, immigrant in Iceland, and her name is Vitalia uh, Lazareva. Uh, and this girl, she uh, got like, hooked up, like uh, had a boyfriend, uh, much older, he's close to 50 years old, she's only 23, 4 years old. Uh, and this man is very well known in the society as like a personal trainer. Uh, although this guy, uh, he is accused of uh, taking her to these parties where a very powerful man uh, kind of uh, used her in, a, in the, the sexual exploited her literally uh, in, a, in a very gruesome way, to be honest. Uh, the thing is, uh, what's interesting about this case and very different from other cases when it comes to Iceland, for example, is when she went into these uh, interviews, 
all of these men, incredibly powerful businessmen and, and people of the media also, uh, one person actually, uh, in the, part of the media, they were all uh, like uh, fired uh, from their job, from their posts. For example, Ari Edvald is one of these guys, he used to be my boss actually once when I was a journalist at one of the biggest media companies in Iceland. Uh, he was the CEO of Ise Skir Export, but they actually just fired him afterwards uh, when, it came, when this, this case hit the media. Very interesting thing. Uh, other characters here, players, uh, is Hreggviður Jónsson. He was in Veritas Capital, one of the, like, this is a huge fund in Iceland. Uh, and the biggest fund of them all, actually, in Iceland is Festas. Uh, if, you, if you're into business in Iceland, you would know this name. Uh, and the chairman there uh, was uh, one of these uh, uh, people that were mentioned, uh, and he has now resigned from his post also. Uh, and uh, as well as, the, of course, the, the media man, he, he was uh, uh, now, uh, he was like a, uh, one of the most famous host in, like news host in Iceland, uh, but he hasn't been there for, for years. And he's been in, in a radio station called K100, uh, and, it's, it's, and he, he's not there anymore. This is very interesting because uh, all of these guys, they were, the moment this came up, they were just uh, swept away. Uh, they all, at the same day, they, uh, sent out this uh, uh, announcement that they were going away, uh, and some of them said that they were innocent of these ac accusations, uh, whatever that means, actually. I mean, it's like how she described this was interesting. She hasn't, uh, well, I'm not aware that she has uh, pressed charges to the police, but she has a lawyer, and I think she's, uh, that will be the next logical step in this case, actually. Uh, and it will be interesting to see how this will go. Uh, and uh, to, to put, like, a political angle into this, uh, the, the Minister of Science, Industry and Innovation got into a huge problem also because of this case, because he actually liked the status of the, this media person. His name is Loji, Loji Bergman. Uh, and uh, because he liked this, a lot of people criticized her uh, for numerous re reasons, actually, but, uh, but the, the biggest critici critic criticism was that she was... Uh, taking a stand with the attacker instead of the, the, the one that was uh, attacked. Uh, and, but she, of course, uh, said that this, was, she, this is a friend of hers and that she was showing him compassion but not taking a side with him. So it, it's, a, it's a complicated debate, like what to do with the like, what does a like even mean, and so on. Uh, the younger generation says a like means I like, <laughs> but uh, the older generation says we like for num numerous reasons, right? So th this has a lot of angles. Uh, it's interesting to see how this is playing out. And some of the peop some people, like uh, there was a professor in sociology, he says uh, that this is perhaps the biggest breakthrough that the Me Too revolution in Iceland have ever had when it comes to uh, like powerful uh, attackers, like in this case. But what will come out of this is interesting, and we, we will have to see how this will play out. Uh, but it's definitely... The, the public in Iceland definitely have a feeling that something is changing. And uh, the reason that this actually happened is because of a very vocal and powerful figure in the, in the media. And this woman is called Etta Falak. And she actually interviewed this girl uh, and let her tell her story. Uh, and uh, this is not the first time uh, news like this is broken out because she has a podcast. Uh, it's, a, it's a play with words. It's called Eyn Corner. It's like... A, housewives, basically, but it's, it has a different meaning if you split the words. Uh, that is like you're your own woman uh, in Icelandic. But uh, yeah, she's a, she's, a pretty, uh, she's a pretty incredible character, and she, this, she has been like fueling this and making this uh, like a national debate, and rightly so, in my opinion. So uh, this is it for the newscast today. Uh, Italy is now playing with Josie. <laughs> Josie is not only throwing sometimes for Polly when I'm forgetting. Sometimes she's uh, just playing with, with Italy. But here we are. So anything you want to say in the end, Italy? You want to add something to this? Wales. Wales, yes. Wales. My name is actually Valur, and it rhymes with Kvalur, which is a whale in Icelandic. So when I was a kid, I was always called Valur Kvalur. That's really, really weird. <laughs> but the thing is, uh, the best thing about Italy's name is that there is nothing, not, not one other word in Icelandic tongue that actually rhymes with your name. <laughs>
<laughs> nothing like an actual word that <laughs> rhymes with my name. No, it's such an old and odd name. Yeah, like everything in the world doesn't rhyme with Ilya, except an uh, Ilya, except like like something that does not exist, like a word that doesn't. Yeah, exist. yeah, we have to make some nonsense up to yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to, <laughs> to rhyme. So this is the Well Museum. Uh, like I said, this is a wonderful museum, uh, not only for us, uh, the, the parents, but for the kids also. And as you can see, there's a lot of things to do and we can have coffee at the same time. Uh, of course, we would have wanted to be here in a better uh, condition, uh, like when it was not COVID basically, but it is what it is, right? <laughs> so uh, thank you for watching. Uh, we'll be here again on Thursday, of course. Uh, until then, see you then. And good luck and good and so on. And the kumbi. Wow, got the float. Mama, come on with it. You're like 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 it.